Hello, welcome to the sixth lecture on software modeling and design under EduSat 18. Today, we are going to discuss about the uh, design patterns and uh, object oriented design we have completed in the last class and today we are going to discuss about the design patterns which is section 7.2 in the prescribed textbook. What are design uh, patterns? Actually, we have seen one of the important uh, aspect of object oriented analysis and modeling is software reuse. And the design of software has been taking place for so many decades and is it required that every time a new application comes, we have to start designing from scratch. Perhaps this looks like it is not required. So, what is to be done? We will look at uh, the other engineering aspects. Like for example, if somebody wants to start a car manufacturing, they will not start from physics today. They will see what are the available uh, patterns like for example, four wheels, steering and things like that, engine and all that and they will start building on those aspects. Even though there is difference from one car to other car, for example, whether it is tire size or whether it is steering size or um, whatever it is placement of seats and other things. What is being done is these tire manufacturers, they have a different mold if there is a small change in the diameter or something like that. So, that they will not create a new tool set for everything rather they will parameterize and then start using it. The same thing is applicable if uh, you know we all uh, in India they celebrate the festival where uh, they make sugar candy and uh, when making sugar candy only the mold is actually changed whereas, the press remains the same. So, in the same way we have been uh, reusing the functions and uh, uh, subroutines only until 90s once object oriented analysis and programming uh, got developed through languages and other things. Now, we have to start thinking about how to use the conceptual or abstract level of the uh, design. So, design patterns represent the best practices used by experienced object oriented software developers. The idea is to maximize the reuse aspect and minimize the new effort. So, design patterns are solutions to general problems that software developers faced during software development. These solutions were obtained by trial and error by numerous software developers over quite a substantial period of time. For the past 30 years, we have been using object oriented techniques and then millions of programmers have used programs and all these programs there must be some pattern which can meet most of the requirements of today's new uh, need. So, in such a case instead of doing the same thing again or inventing the car wheel again, we have to see is there any available pattern which we can modify or which we can use as it is that is one aspect of it. The other aspect is if we have to design a new thing, then we have to see to it we make it so generalized that it can be used even in future also whether it is conceptual abstract or whether it is object or whether it is component or even at the system level. So, when it comes to the abstract or concept level then it is called as design pattern. We will find, we will see what are the patterns that are uh, uh, that are being used today. Design patterns are optimized reusable solutions to the programming problems that we encounter every day. And a design pattern is not a class or a library that we can simply plug into our system. It is much more than that, it is conceptual and it is abstract at that level that means, it is at a higher level than 
the implementation of class or library. So, at the conceptual level we want to use the system. It is a template that has to be implemented in the correct situation and it is not language specific either. When we talk about class or library it is language specific, but design patterns are one level higher. So, it is language independent. So, conceptually we have to use the design so that it can be implemented into any language. A good design pattern should be implementable in most if not all languages depending on the capabilities of the language. Any design pattern if implemented in the wrong place it can be disastrous. So, before using the design pattern we should be careful that this is what actually we want to use and this is the solution. So, using design pattern requires uh, considerable experience on the part of the system designer and the programmer. However, when correctly implemented it can be a great solution. So, this uh, indicates that uh, programming and system design are highly skilled and then which can be enhanced through experience and programming as programming jobs. Okay, so, in summary a design pattern is a standard solution to a common programming problem, a technique for making code more flexible by making it meet certain criteria, a design or implementation structure that achieves a particular purpose, a high level programming EDM it is not language dependent, but it is an EDM or it is a concept or it is an abstract uh, notion. A shorthand for describing certain aspects of program organization, connections among program components the shape of an object diagram or object mode will be developed subsequently. So, what are the types of patterns? Patterns have been divided into mainly three types, they are creational, structural and behavioral. The creational pattern will address problems of creating an object in a flexible way, separate creation from operation use. That means, the creation of an object should be different, should be separated from the operation or use of the object that is the idea. So, the structural one is these are concerned with class and object composition, concept of inheritance is used to compose interfaces and define ways to compose objects to obtain new functionalities. This is basically using the concept of inheritance new patterns can be designed or at the level of inheritance the patterns are combined into the required solution. Behavioral is the third one, this one specifically is concerned with the communication between objects or messaging. Patterns address problems of assigning responsibilities to classes, suggest both static relationships and patterns of communication or use cases or behavioral. So, these are the three types of pattern. We will see in fact, there are totally 23 types of patterns have been identified uh, by the um, programmers and uh, out of this uh, major uh, are three creational, structural and behavioral. One more is there J 2 E E which we are not going to discuss in the class, but we will see an example of creational, structural and behavioral. When we look into an example it will be clear how actually they are working. So, mainly it is reusability helping new designers to have a more flexible and reusable design. So, that the development of the application will become faster, improving documentation and maintenance of existing system by furnishing an explicit specification of class and object interactions and their intent. So, once we start reusing then again and again documenting will become easy, because most of the things can be uh, considered as common among the applications. So, that the same documentation with a little modification will be able to be created, which will help in releasing the application fast, releasing the manuals and documentation faster that is another advantage. So, the recurring design structures are exhibit the uh, abstraction, flexibility, modularity and elegance therein lies valuable design knowledge. That means, our design pattern 
should be abstract, should be flexible, it should be modular and the solution should be simple and elegant means it should be able to be understood by uh, normal people. So, problem is capturing, communicating and applying this knowledge. So, over a period of time programmers and analysts have acquired the experience to create a good system or good programs or good uh, um, uh, scheme with abstraction, flexibility, modularity and elegance. Now, how to pass on this knowledge, capture this communicating and applying this knowledge, because as we have seen earlier, design is mainly a creative task. This creative task, how to represent it is one of the important things and then how to reuse is another important aspect. So, a design pattern abstracts a recurring design structure, a recurring design structure that is what we have said and most of the times the design structures are recurring or we have to identify is it recurring in any other way. That is one of the important aspects of a system designer to identify recurring design structure. It comprises class and our object plus dependencies, structures, interactions and conventions. Names and specifies the design structure explicitly. Once a design structure has been identified, we have to name it and specify it so that it can be used again and again as a common design pattern and can be identified by all the people who are using it or who need it and who are stakeholders. So, it has to be named and identified and it actually distills design experience means it enriches the uh, product through experience. Benefits of patterns are design reuse, uniform design vocabulary this is one of the important things. So, that people will identify the design pattern and they will be able to use it and they will be able to convey it and they will be able to document it. Enhance understanding, restructuring and team communication. Team com for team communication vocabulary is very important and this is the basis for automation. So, that it can be taken modified and used or used as it is and it can be plug and play and things like that. Not at the level of component, but at the design or at the conceptual level it can speed up automation. Transcends language centric biases or myopia. So, when it is beyond or when it is language independent, then even common people or people experienced in any one language will be able to understand the conceptual under, uh, design and abstracts away from many unimportant details, which is actually the nitty gritty of the uh, programming language and environment, which is not required at the design level. And however, there are some disadvantages in patterns and they are require significant tedious and error prone human effort to handcraft pattern implementations and design reuse. Basically, the idea is the more you get experienced using the design pattern, the better the person will be, because otherwise to acquire this expertise and skill, it requires tedious and error prone human effort. So, however, the uh, standardization of documentation, representation etcetera will try to reduce this uh, tedious effort to a large extent, but still there is nothing like a good experience for designing uh, or using the design patterns. Can be deceptively simple, it may appear to be very simple, but uh, unless we start using it, it is not possible to identify what could be the problem or what could be the difference between uh, the one what is being expected and what is available and may limit design options, because this is available I will use this. If this is uh, this kind of attitude may uh, come to the designers, so they will try to use only what is available rather than thinking about how whether it is suitable or not or what new things are required etcetera. 
So, leaves some important details unresolved because by its very nature the design patterns are abstract and conceptual, the details are not taken into account whereas, the differentiation between two applications will be mainly in details and uh, basically the application may look for example, every accounting application is same at the accounting level, but when it comes to the details of implementation it may differ and uh, that is one of the most important aspects of the system and uh, these things are not resolved at the pattern or at the design level. Okay. So, a design pattern is a way of reusing and abstract knowledge about a problem and its solution. We have discussed the NF about this. Uh, it should be sufficiently abstract to be reused in different settings. Pattern descriptions usually make use of object oriented characteristics such as inheritance and polymorphism. A design pattern is a description of communicating objects and classes that are customized to solve a general design problem in a particular context. The last one is very important. Design patterns are general design aspect, general design patterns and then we have to customize it to solve a particular context. So, how patterns are, now we will come to how patterns are represented or it is uh, conveyed. So, every pattern is uh, represented through name and the problem description, the solution description and the consequences. Like for example, the name is a meaningful pattern identifier must be there. Pattern description explains the problem and its context and the solution description is not a concrete design, but a template for a design solution that can be instantiated in different ways consequences the results and trade offs of applying the pattern. So, this is how the patterns are uh, represented and they are the elements of a pattern. And we have to understand what is the difference between patterns, architectures and frameworks. So, let us try to uh, an architecture is at a very high level model level structure at the highest possible level at the product level let us say at the application level or at the system level is the architecture. Patterns are more like at the component level or sub component level a small scale or local architectures for architectural components or sub components. Frameworks are partially completed software systems that may be targeted at a particular type of application. These are tailored by completing the unfinished components. So, a pattern is actually a small scale local architecture that is what uh, is the difference between patterns, architectures and frameworks. Now, let us see a pattern, a creational pattern of singleton. For example, the name is singleton and the problem is how can we guarantee that one and only one instance of a class can be created that is the problem. That means, we know that if we have a class, we can go on creating any number of objects, but here the condition is for a given class, we should be able to create only one object. So, the context is in some applications, it is important to have exactly one instance of a class, example sales of one company. So, we have to have only one instance of the class or only one object should be created from a class, how do we implement it? We will see this is called as singleton because the word creation has come there that means, we are creating an object or a unique object from a class or only one object from a class or one instance of a class we call it as creational. Now, forces can make an object globally accessible as a global variable. Okay but this violates encapsulation that means, we can make the object as globally accessible uh, global variable, but then encapsulation property is lost because the prop the encapsulation property it requires that it should be a class and then uh, uh, it should not be uh, access the inside should not be accessible uh, by outside like operations and attributes, but polymorphic redefinition is not always possible also and solution is create a class with a class operation get instance. When class is first accessed 
this creates relevant object instance and returns object identity to the client. On subsequent calls of get instance, no new instance is created, but identity of existing object is returned. Okay. So, the idea is very simple. That means, we create a class with the class operation get instance and this get instance operation will see whether an object has already been created with this class. If it has been created, it will simply return that object. If it is not yet created, it will create an instance of the class. That is the basic thing. That means, a class is having an operation get instance. When we execute that, it will check whether an instance of the class has been already created. If created, it will return that object. If not, it will create a new instance or new object. This is the class diagram and how it is done. Like for example, it is a singleton and we have what is known as the unique instance and singleton data as the properties. This is the object identifier for singleton instance, class, scope or static and we have the methods called get instance or the operations get instance, get singleton data, singleton operation and singleton. This is actually a private constructor only accessible via get instance and then get instance returns object identifier for unique instance, class, scope or static. When we execute get instance, it checks if unique instance is null. That means, if there is no instance of the class, then it will create a new singleton. That means, it will create a new object. Otherwise, it will return simply the identity of the object, which is actually the return unique instance. So, this is the, uh, uh, let us say, uh, a small uh, zero code type of thing for the class. Uh, and example is, the code is like this class is singleton, private uh, uh, is singleton unique instance is equal to null and uh, uh, private singleton is the operation which uh, is a private constructor, public static singleton get instance is the method and if unique instance is null, then unique instance is equal to new object is created, otherwise it will return the identity of the object. So, this is how the design pattern is implemented. What does this design pattern do is, it will implement that a class can have only one instance and not more than one instance. That is how this is implemented. The comments are, to specify a class has only one instance, we make it inherit from singleton. We have seen the singleton uh, uh, class and then from there we can inherit it. Controlled access to single object instance through singleton encapsulation can tailor for any finite number of instances, namespace not extended by global variables. These are the advantages. Disadvantages are access requires additional message passing and pattern limits flexibility significant redesign of the singleton class later gets many instances. So, basically okay, this is advantages and disadvantages, let us not worry about it for the time being. The idea is how to implement a singleton design pattern. What is a singleton design pattern and then how to make sure that an instance of a class once it is created, a second instance is not created whereas, it will return only the id of the first instance that is the important thing. Now, let us see the pattern factory. The factory pattern is one of the most used design patterns in Java. This type of design pattern comes under creational pattern as this pattern provides one of the best ways to create an object. In factory pattern, we create object without exposing the creation logic to the client and refer to newly created object using a common interface. So, create an interface and concrete classes implementing the interface. Basically, the idea is that uh, without getting into the details, 
of what kind of uh, class or object is required at the time we have a design pattern that can we can use it for creating multiple objects or multiple classes and without knowing what type of object we are irrespective of type of object or class that is the idea. So, here we have an implementation a factory class where we say that it is a shape factory like for example, we want to implement the circle, square and rectangle and depending on what is required at the time of execution or at run time. So, basically a factory class shape factory is defined which is actually this class and then factory pattern demo uses shape factory to get shape object it will pass information circle rectangle and square to shape factory which is the shape factory is here and then here we have the uh, factory pattern uh, uh, demo and uh, get the type of the object it needs like uh, means at the time uh, we can use the uh, design pattern of uh, uh, the shape factory to create any shape like circle square or rectangle. So, we will see the code how it is being implemented the steps are create an interface shape dot java create concrete classes implementing the same interface that is step 2 that is rectangle square and circle this is what we have shown here circle square and rectangle basically this is the base class from where it implements or it is the interface from where it implements the circle square or rectangle and the step 3 is create a factory to generate object of concrete class based on given information. What is the meaning of concrete class is otherwise we have abstract class and the concrete class actually implements the methods. Abstract class will not implement the methods whereas, it will uh, provide only the um, uh, only the structure. So, that is the meaning of it and for those who have uh, no knowledge of Java do not worry uh, too much about uh, these aspects right now. We, when we go through the code you will be able to understand it it is quite simple. The idea is that generally we create an interface known as shape dot java and then concrete classes are created from the interfaces depending on what is the method or uh, what is the operations to be implemented and then subsequently the we will uh, generate the shape factory is another application which will generate object of concrete class based on given information at the time of running the application. Step 4 is use the factory to get object of concrete class by passing an information such as type like for example, what type circle or square or rectangle etcetera and then verify the output. We will see actually all the 5 steps how it is implemented as an example. The first step is creating a public interface by name shape and the second step is creating rectangle java and uh, inside rectangle draw and then public class square okay, and then public class implement shape this is about the circle. So, we have three concrete classes which is derived from the public interface shape which are actually the rectangle and the square and the circle. Basically, this class public class rectangle implements shape, shape is actually the interface that means, from here we take the draw as the method and which overrides the draw that is for the rectangle and when executed with the rectangle parameter or rectangle uh, 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 instance, then it will print 
inside rectangle draw method and with square as parameter it will print inside square draw method and with circle as parameter it will implement or it will show inside circle draw method. This is actually the step 2. What is step? This is shape factory. Basically, this is step 3 where if the shape type is null it will return or it will get the shape get shape from whether we want circle or we want square or we want rectangle and if there is nothing it will return. However, if it is circle that means it ignores the class for it ignores the case for example, if it is circle then return new circle, if it is square uh, or if it is rectangle return new rectangle, if it is square return uh, new square. New square is actually a new object created according to the uh, square class and according to rectangle class, uh, circle class etcetera which itself has been derived from the interface shape. Now, we can see here factory pattern demo. Now, if the shape factory is a new shape factory and get an object of circle and call its draw method, then shape 1 is equal to shape factory dot get shape circle. If it is so, then it will draw shape 1 and it will draw shape 2 and it will draw shape 3 if it is square. We will see the output now. We have the, the idea is that uh, from the basic interface we derive concrete classes and then we create the uh, Java program to execute that and then the output is inside circle draw method because this we have seen as system dot uh, out dot print line uh, this is actually inside rectangle draw this we have seen. So, that is the output inside circle draw inside rectangle draw method inside square draw method. This is actually the factory implementation. So, now we have seen two implementations one is factory implementation other one is singleton. Basically, these are how design patterns are used. So, we can see now we do not have to start from scratch for this implementation and we already have available patterns which we can take it and then we can build our application on top of it. So, the third one is the facade which is actually the structural type of thing which is how can we access a large number of classes with a complex internal interaction in a simple, but safe way. So, is it possible for us we have got a large number of classes which is not defined at the time of uh, requirement, but at runtime only they are available introduce a dedicated interface class that simplifies the view of the class collection. So, this is also we we, we have a dedicated interface built that means the interface is built to start with and then from there we will go further. So, like for example, this is a facade facade means actually a mask that means it is a mask we have to make call to only one mask and then it will be able to access any classes that is connected to or that is derived from this facade. So, that is the subsystem classes are shown here. So, the uh, example is given here like uh, for example, this is the pattern name is facade security manager and then we have only the uh, methods named here that is all that is the abstract or um, what you can say as a, um, abstract uh, uh, class add access rate, add actor, add actor role and remove actor and these are actual methods that are uh, uh, that are uh, concrete implementations that is access uh, in these classes access right actor and actor role and then when we make call to the facade in turn it instantiates these classes and then from there it executes these methods. So, that is the idea of providing an interface between the uh, application and the uh, result that is required. So, clients communicate with the subsystem by sending request to facade which forwards them to the appropriate subsystem objects. Although subsystem objects perform actual work facade may have to translate its interface to subsystem interfaces. Clients that use the facade do not have to access its subsystem objects directly. 
usually only one facade object is required, thus a facade, a facade object is often a singleton. Usually in a system, one facade is required or one masking from which it can access all other classes or all other objects or even all other methods. So, the third one is actually the observer behavior. The observer, observer actually it is, uh, it comes under behavior, uh, behavioral pattern. Observer pattern is used when there is one to many relationship between objects such as if one object is modified, its dependent objects are to be notified automatically. Observer pattern falls under behavioral pattern category. Many times we get into a situation where objects are communicating with each other at runtime and then if the state of one object changes, other objects need to know that the state of this object has changed and the relationship between the object whose state is changed and other objects where there is need to know those changes may be one to many. That means, one change may have to be conveyed to many of the objects. So, here the name of the pattern is called as observer. Problem is define a one to many dependency among objects. So, that when one object changes state, all of its dependents are notified and updated automatically and model view controller, but refined by separating abstract from concrete subjects and observers. So, we will see how the description is separates the display of object state from the object itself uses used when multiple displays of state are needed. See slide with the UML description, we will see that now optimization to enhance display performance are impractical. So, we will see in the UML the, the, the pattern name uh, is observer, description is separates the display of the state of an object from the object itself and allows alternative displays to be provided. When the object state changes, all displays are automatically notified and updated to reflect the change. Basically, one change has to be reflected in multiple places. Problem description, in many situations, you need to provide multiple displays of state information such as graphical display and a tabular display. Not all of these may be known when the information is specified. All alternative representations should support interaction and when the state is changed, all the displays must be updated. This pattern may be used in all situations where more than one display format for state information is required and where it is not necessary for the object that maintains the state information to know about the specific display formats used. One example of this is in an excel sheet we have the data in one sheet and we have the corresponding graph in another sheet and uh, uh, the types of graph may be uh, different in different sheets, but a change in the data in one sheet may be reflected immediately in other sheets. I mean that is a that is an example of uh, the visualization of the problem. Now, we will see the solution description is involves two abstract objects subject and observer and two concrete objects. So, abstract object is actually not implemented, concrete objects implements the uh, methods of the abstract objects in the uh, concrete uh, object. Concrete subject and concrete object with uh, inherit the attributes of the related abstract objects. The abstract objects include general operations that are applicable in all situations. The state to be displayed is maintained in concrete object which inherits operations from subject allowing it to add and remove uh, observes, uh, uh, remove observers. Each observer corresponds to a display and to issue a notification when the state has changed. Here in this case, the observer or an actor is a display. Basically, the display has to be changed whenever any data or the basic data is changed. The basic data is actually the subject and whenever the subject changes, all the observers have to be changing. So, the concrete observer maintain copy of the state of concrete subject and implements the update interface of observer that allows those copies to be kept in step. 
the concrete observer automatically displays the state and reflects changes whenever the state is updated. We will see the consequences are the subject only knows the abstract observer and does not know the details of the concrete class. Therefore, there is minimal coupling between these objects before because of this lack of knowledge optimizations that enhance display performance are impractical. Changes to the subject may cause a set of linked updates to observers to be generated, some of which may not be necessary. Basically, the idea is this is the abstract uh, uh, class or abstract object subject and uh, from here the concrete uh, subject uh, is uh, uh, created or inherited and uh, similarly from the observer concrete observer is inherited and then any changes in the subjects are actually uh, conveyed to the concrete observer and uh, that is how the state of the uh, subject is getting changed. It is basically the behavior of uh, one uh, item is conveyed to uh, all other uh, observers or all other um, uh, users basically. So, concrete subject notifies the observers whenever a change occurs. After being informed of change, a concrete observer queries the subject to reconcile its state with subjects. Observer object that initiates change request postpones its update until it gets notification from subject. So, notify is not always called by subject, can be called by an observer or any other object. Pattern is well known, has wide range of variants. So, we have seen now the three or the four uh, patterns, the singleton, the factory, uh, the facade and the observer and uh, this is the uh, sequence diagram of the uh, observer uh, pattern and uh, basically the idea is if uh, the subject is actually having a tabular column which is represented by different graphs as I have already said in an excel sheet and then if any changes are here it is immediately reflected in the uh, graph in uh, both the graphs uh, uh, as well uh, in uh, this graph as well as in uh, the other graph. So, the observers are we have got two observers here observer uh, 1 and observer 2 and both of them uh, are uh, uh, observing the subject uh, which is actually the concrete uh, uh, class observer and observer 1 and then any changes that are uh, observed is immediately reflected and then displayed in the graphs multiple displays using the observer pattern. So, However, the design problems are to use patterns in our design, we need to recognize that any design problem may have an associated pattern that can be applied. So, basically this knowledge is required. Tell several objects that the state of some other objects has changed. Tidy up the interfaces to a number of related objects that have often been developed incrementally. Provide a standard way of accessing the elements in a collection and allow for the possibility of extending the functionality of an existing class at runtime. So, guidelines for using design patterns is, is there a pattern that addresses my problem? Does the pattern provide an acceptable solution? Is there a simpler solution? Is the context of a pattern consistent with my problem? Are the consequences of using the pattern acceptable? Are there forces in my environment that conflict with the use of the pattern? Ideally, when we use the pattern, our task must be simplified or it has to become more efficient. If not, perhaps we are not using the right pattern or we are not using the correct technology. So, the benefits and dangers of patterns are support software reuse, language for discussing high level problems because we have seen we can understand the pattern terminology etcetera without getting expertise in any of the programming languages means it is not language dependent. Access to experience and knowledge, some amount of knowledge and experience will always help in uh, knowing the pattern, but uh, a good experience will help us in identifying or acquiring skill in using patterns. But when we use 
patterns because they are readily available they are readily available it limits our creativity and needs a culture of reuse many times people may not like to reuse they want to create everything themselves needs organizational education because is like a pattern is available at the library level or something like that so uh, organizational education is required to make or to implement reuse and to have knowledge of the pattern and what are the things that are available so this completes uh, today's lecture tomorrow we will discuss about uh, the implementation and uh, uh, open source software and etc so to conclude uh, to today we have discussed about the uh, design patterns and then what is pattern what is a design pattern and how it is beneficial what are the types of design patterns like uh, uh, creative uh, creational and uh, uh, structural and uh, behavioral etc and then how to implement it uh, we have given some four examples which are we have seen four examples which are singleton factory facade and observer and then we discussed about the advantages and uh, some of the dangers of uh, the design patterns and this concludes today's lecture thank you